Hello people, it is Lion Killer here <laughs> and we have a nether fortress mob spawner. Oh yeah, this is the prototype that I've been designing for the past couple of days. It spawns wither skulls, it spawns blaze, it spawns zombie pigmen. And I believe it spawns the small magma cubes as well. Although they're quite a rare chance. It should deal with them just the same way. I haven't tested it yet. But look what we have here. <laughs> we have a ton of mobs all cramped together. Here comes another blaze. Now the rates, as you can probably see, are pretty slow at the moment. And that's because well, this is reminiscent of Zisto's advanced lighting technique. <laughs> Lava bucket ho! <laughs> um, I tried to get rid of all external available spawning space so that all the spawning space will reside in the machine. Uh, but it's very, very difficult in the nether. And this would be like an ongoing project. Like every time you come here, grab a couple of stone pickaxes, some TNT and start chiseling away at this entire area. It's all controlled by this lava clock here. There is a... This is an improved version. There's a tutorial to the old one on my... on my page. And... Well, let's go kill some of these dudes. See what we get. <laughs> oh, we got a golden sword. They... I've dropped in 22 blocks, so they're not one-shotted yet. Uh, but you could always add your, your crushers or whatever you want to add. But the reason I'm not getting good rates, like I said, is because I haven't destroyed available spawning space. But I'm getting not bad rates. So let's go have a look at how this baby works. Okay, oh my god, that's been destroyed. Oh no, here come the blaze. Hang on a second, I'll put on a peaceful for this. Okay, so... What I've done here is I have built this on a junction of a nether fortress that I've started blowing up, as you can see. Um, I always mark my nether fortresses with obsidian so that I know where they are if I ever want to use them again. So this is, uh, this is the remains of a nether fortress and it went all the way along here into this junction here and it continued along and it continued along with that. Now I'm going to add a couple more of these segments to either side of this. Um, as you notice I've made it in the junction so that I could add more segments on each side. Um, let's take a look at a, a normal nether forest. <laughs> uh, as you can see I've been trying to prepare the area deleting all available spawning space. but we need a walkway. Do we have a walkway anywhere? No, we do not. Right, okay, let's make one. Okay, if you imagine that this is a walkway here. So it goes three across. Then it goes one up. This is your general tileable walkway. And how we calculate where the mobs of the nether fortress are allowed to spawn is like this. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then across 2, 3, 4, 5 and likewise it goes 1, 2, 3, 4 and then across 2, 3 and 4 and these are the available areas that inside this box a nether mob can spawn, a nether fortress mob can spawn. These are wither skulls and blazes are specific to nether fortresses. Um, so what I've done is I've... I'll see if I can get back. Oh that looks really mesmerizing. <laughs> what I've done is I have isolated these spawning spaces and made them into spawnable areas. All the obsidian platforms are spawnable areas and I've went with the old faithful technique for pushing them down. 
So the minute they spawn, they'll get pushed. And as you can see, I've alternated it repeater, redstone, repeater, redstone. Now, what happens is they spawn here and they fall down. And when they fall down, they'll be reset by these vines and fall onto what you saw there. They'll fall onto this glass pathway here. And the reason this is glass is because it's not part of that. I'll get onto that in a second. <laughs> It's not part of that area that you saw, so we don't want any mobs spawning there, so we make it a transparent block. And so what happens is, they spawn on the area we want them to, they fall down. Hang on a second. And when they fall down, they land on this glass bit here, which has got trip wires attached to sticky pistons, which will push them into this one wide gap. And when they're in here, this transportation system, as you can see, it doesn't transport people and it's glitching out. I think that's a visual glitch, it's been happening quite a lot. It hasn't really affected anything. That's a visual glitch. So, yeah, it's a visual glitch. So, this transportation system was designed by a person I play on a server with. He's a very, very clever guy, and he doesn't have a YouTube channel as far as I'm aware, but I'll ask him, and if he does, I'll definitely link him in the description. His name is Trazont, and oh, he's very, very gifted at redstone. Like, some of the creations he makes are just amazing. Like, some of them, he makes tileable everything, and this is one of his transportation systems that I've used to transport the mobs in the center into this area here where they will then be pushed by these two pistons into this one wide tube. Um, so let's get on to how this works. So what happens is when a pulse comes in it splits into these two segments. This line here will activate the regular pistons which are placed diagonally like that. And this one here goes into the sticky pistons, which will push the regular pistons out. And it needs to be timed right. There is a... Behind here, there is a one tick repeater, which times the entire thing right, and fires all the mobs really, really quickly along here. Uh, this is just a very... This is a prototype design, as you can see, I've still got a lot of bits and bobs sticking out of everywhere that don't need to be there, and the red wiring's very messy, and there's lava everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do things rough. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and seeing this prototype in action. Um, and stay tuned for more guys. So I'm Lankula and I'll see you guys later.